Good morning, hello everybody, hello. welcome. It is, and it's quite nice with the, the Ukraine thing as well at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. With their symbol being the uh, sunflower. Let's get some birdsong on. So good morning, hope you're all right, hope you're well. Um, so I've got two absolute newbies in the room with me today who've never <laughs> done, you've done, not newbies to the world of art, but <laughs> new to gouache. Yeah. And Trish was saying just now, what is it? Why have I never heard of it? Is it something new? Well, actually, it's been around since the Elizabethan times. And um, Queen Elizabeth's the first portrait painter, Sir Nicholas <coughs> Hilliard, used to use it a lot. However, it was only ever available in white. And it was known as body colour. So if you see a painting in a gallery that says watercolour and body colour, it means gouache now. Okay. Um, because basically it's it's got chalk in it so it's okay. so if you think of it as it's a watercolor but a heavily opaque watercolor because of the chalk um, so it dries differently to watercolor it dries you know like emulsion when you put it on the mm. wall it goes slightly dull and a little bit darker mm. and flat mm. that's what gouache does so it's used a lot by designers um, the pre-Raphaelites used to use it all the time in their paintings because it adds body and uh, in terms of opacity to watercolours. So up until the 50s, 40s, 50s, it was just white gouache and they'd mix white gouache with watercolour to make it opaque, which you can do. So you could buy a tube of white gouache and mix it with watercolours. But now, you know, um, I suppose the nearest thing is poster paint in kiddie form, poster to paint, but in artist quality. That the stuff we're using is is artist quality um, gouache, which is between six and twelve pounds a tube, but it lasts a long time. The tubes are about that that size. Um, but I did a whole class full of eight people, and we did three paintings each, and only used half a tube between the eight of us in each of the colours. Um, so no, it's so really it's economical. I, I use it for my pet portraits and all of that because it's opaque. However, where I prefer it to, I love acrylics and I did, you know, I was Dale around his acrylic demonstrator for years. So I, I had to love it. I was paid to love it, but I did like it. Um, but the problem with acrylics, as you know, is when it dries, that's it. You can't do anything with acrylics. Gouache. When it's dry you can re-wet it um. so that actually means that if you've done something on your paper you can add another color and blend it in rather than have the issue of of it just being stuck on top so it's actually a lot more versatile than gouache uh, than acrylic so i look at it as as an in-between watercolor and gu uh, and acrylics gouache is kind of in the middle of the two that makes sense yeah. i i really look I, I love it i mean i've because I do these classes all the time, um, I used to just squeeze out what colours I needed on my tile um, in the hope that I'd keep it and then I'd put the tile away and then they'd fall off the tile and I'd lose the paint anyway. So I've just squeezed all of my tubes into uh, empty pans. So I've got my own little set. But you can buy, uh, I mean we sell them downstairs, you can buy them in the tube or you can buy a set of, uh, of gouache that's so already hard. Yeah, oh. they set hard and you just re-wet them. Oh. Um, but I always have a little bit extra white, wet white, um, just to increase the opacity. Um, so what's cool about gouache is that you can paint on literally any sort of surface. Um, see that portrait I did of Tony Hart's on a watercolour board. Um, but then um, you can use watercolour paper. You can use mixed media paper. Let's see if I can find some knocking. tend to use coloured cards, so that is on grey, really vibrant. Um, so it's just allowing for it to change how it works. Today we're actually working on pastel paper because I couldn't find anything the right blue. <laughs> so we can't use lots of water, but you don't tend to. Um, but what this means is that you can use a background that is the main colour of your picture. And that means you haven't got to paint it. 
which is easy, isn't it? Yeah. Easier. However, I did find out today, I drew it in pencil and I couldn't actually see it. <laughs> so I've got a white pastel pencil to sketch it out today. So um, you can do it. You can do it exactly the same as this or you can do it slightly lighter. And the pastel pencil will work quite nicely with gouache. A, because the paint's water-based, it'll absorb the pastel pencil. And also it's got chalk in it. So it'll just add to the chalkiness. So it's, it's all fine. Is this anything to do with like the Annie Sloan chalk paints, that sort of concept? It's similar, sort of, um, the way it goes on is very similar to that kind of yeah. stuff. Mm. Is there any reason why we haven't got a board? You don't need it. You just go straight onto the paper if you're onto the table. Because okay. you're not going to be that messy, are you, Trish? Well, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's Trish. I don't think it's Trish you've got to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's, uh, I'm not going to do uh, Christine on you. <laughs> oh, bless her. Oh, bless. I've forgotten how to draw. So we've got to draw this. Mm -hmm. Just when I got used to just applying paint <laughs> with just a line. And Sometimes I do throw in a curveball with a bit of drawing. Oh, Harry, I didn't even know where to start. Um, I started with these petals here, these few that are closest to us. Oh, okay. And then work my way around. But don't worry. It doesn't, it's going to look like a sunflower regardless of what you draw. Okay. You can't even trace this because um, it, it'd take twice as long to trace because of using having to use chalk. But I, I think you'll like gouache. It will feel a bit weird. throwing loads of questions at me this morning you two no that's right um the pastel pen it's the same stuff in a pastel pencil that's in a pastel stick except it's a bit harder yeah. so it doesn't crumble all the time but it's the same it is chalk so right. um when we do a pastels class we use the sticks and the pencils like together. Um, together yeah because okay. it okay. The, the pencils give you a bit more detail yeah um however if you put too much pastel you know from the sticks on your paper yeah the pastel pencils because they're harder won't stick to it so they'll nothing will happen right. so you have to you, you have to kind of balance it but um there's a few pastels that we've done almost just with the, the, the pencils but i mean that that's pastels and we use the mixture of pencils and sticks in that's that pastels one. yeah wow because in it that was last thursday or the thursday before Pastels is on a Thursday morning. Um, let's find another one. I've only ever done one pastel. Have you? I loved it. Do you know, I never used to teach pastels because I get in the right mess with them. I do. I get, yeah. I, I'm really spoon with them. However, my students always tell me, um, when I post them on social media, the pastels always get the most likes. And one of my students said, you need to do more pastels. So I thought, do you know what? Let's, let's do a pastels class. And then I, it forces me to do it. But that's in your pastel pencil, that pigeon. That is absolutely beautiful. Uh, this is nearly, I don't think we used any pencils at all with that one, but that's um, that's pastel. Wow. And these are all what we've done in the in the Thursday morning class. Oh wow, Trish. So I'm not You're really a bit better at drawing than me. I'm not very I can't give enough no, already. That kind, of, <laughs> that kind of thing. It's it's good for reflection pastel. Yeah, I'm not coming here in the mornings anymore. Why? Because I can smell bacon. <laughs> Tell me about it. You should you should oh. be here every flipping day. It's torture. Absolutely. Oh, it just smells so delicious. They do one called the Barry Bacon because it's one that I have, and it's bacon, melted cheddar, and barbecue sauce. And occasionally, if she's quiet on a Saturday. And she's got bacon left over. She'll shout up and say, "Barry, do you want a Barry bacon?" And I go, "Yeah." Yeah. <laughs> Who, who'd say no to that? Absolutely. 
It's the same as when any offer you a cup of tea, you always say, yeah, it's just, it's just British, isn't it? Bacon sandwich, yes. Cup of tea, yes. Yeah. So it, it, it works very differently. Some of my students absolutely love gouache. Um, others aren't quite sure about it because they either come from an acrylic background where it, they expect it to be acrylics, which it isn't. Um, but some watercolorists use white gouache anyway, don't they, to add a bit of bulk to it or a bit of opacity. So if you're not sure, I don't think we've got any tubes of gouache and we've got the rep downstairs so we're, we're gonna have to we'll, we'll be ordering some today but um if you're tentative about doing gouache and you've already got watercolors then you could just buy a good quality white tube and when you want to do gouache just mix that with your paints or you could go the whole hog i mean we've got some basic student sets of gouache for like eight quid they're not as opaque but they're more opaque than watercolors um i don't know i think you'll like it but you'd also like the pastels classes that we do on thursday morning basically you should all just live here <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, i tell you what i'd have a whale of a day but the gouache classes are going to move uh, from July to a Monday evening and be once a month instead because they're not overly popular um, in real life they're more popular as a recording so the Monday evening class is going to be a uh, a water-based media session so the first Monday every evening uh, first Monday evening of the month is watercolor the second Monday is gouache the third Monday is watercolor pencils and the fourth Monday is pen and wash and if there's a fifth one it's whatever I feel like But it's all in the new booklets. So have you got a favourite medium yet, Viv? Uh, I really enjoyed the oil class that we did. Oh, yeah. I really enjoyed that. And I'm just 
kind of stuck with acrylics, I suppose, because that's I, I do like working with acrylics. Yeah. Well, they are very versatile, and you can paint on anything, can't you? Yeah. Which I think is good. Turn that in because you can paint over it. I'll just bring in the engraver. Okay. <laughs> so you'll be fine. It must be that chair. It's that table, <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. It is. But okay. unlike the acrylic glass, gouache will wash out. Shit. Right. I, I really like that leaf as well. I thought I'd turn well, that You can in stick it, stick another one in. Oh. Add add a bit of leaf. Because who's going to know, really? Gosh, you've done that well, um, Trish. Really? Yeah. My, left, my pepper's not long enough, but I think they're all right. I think they'll be fine. Yeah, they'll be okay. Because you can change it once the paint goes on. I it's like just... Join with this. It's nice. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you can do that with acrylics, because sometimes... If you're doing an acrylics where you've got a really strong... Like, if we were doing this in acrylics, but we'd probably paint the background... Uh, yeah. blue but then we'd lose what we'd drawn of yes. the acrylics uh, uh, for the flowers so you could paint your whole background blue and then use pastels to draw instead of pencils so it doesn't show oh, off Trish. so acrylic black the background in the blue and then yeah. draw with the pastels and then paint with the gouache pa or paint with acrylics or paint with acrylics oh okay yeah so i often use pastels if i if i need if pencil won't show up mm. i'll use pastels because it tends to blend with everything It's not got a floppy brush like coins or anything. No. It's softer, it's a bit more mm. workable, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Nice. And it rubs out with a, a putty eraser in the same sort of way. So that's a, that's a bonus. Bloody heck, that's mine. <laughs> well, mine hasn't got a bad rub on it. Oh, no. <laughs> it's got red blobs as well. <laughs> it's not much better, really. Have you have you both drawn? We're drawn. Yeah. You're drawn. Feeling drawn. So we've got a few colours today. We've got black and white, because white is really crucial. Like with acrylics and oils, you do tend to use white more with gouache. Uh, burnt sienna. We don't need much. Um, very little cad red, mainly for the centre, and then uh, cad yellow because the petals are quite vibrant. But a bit of lemon yellow as well because uh, it'll be useful in the leaves and ultramarine so we've got quite a few colours to play with oh, and which one's ultra what's in there well, not, are we not putting the ultramarine out I am putting the ultramarine out that's why I'm going to say am I going crazy no <laughs> it's because I haven't given you any <laughs> I, I just wanted to see how you're going to make green <laughs> <laughs> oh I know now I've got my glasses on because um, Right, I'm going to stick this over this side, Trish. No, Trish. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you teach me. Don't, don't stick your arm in that way. <laughs> was it on your hand, or uh, did it get caught on something? No, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it was on my hand. I just, just I don't know. Oh, I don't know yeah. what I did. Which camera is that? I don't know. Because it's always been on the board and I've never known. Whatever we haven't got. Like, a big... Impasto down as well. Yeah, because we haven't got any. Okay. Yeah. I'm 
I've got size sensitive for one. A massive. I've mm. gone for the size of Zanya Elita. The Elita right. one that Zanya bought is 28 pounds. I've gone for one each of the. Okay, that's four. Two biggest. Perfect. Okay. So it's a size sensitive one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah, the box easels are quite good. It's one of our best-selling easels, they really? are. Cause, yeah, because you can store all your stuff inside and turn the lid round and then work from that. I'm not, I'm not a, a huge lover of easels. I'll use it when I'm working on big stuff. But I, I tend to work quite flat. Yeah, I've never used an easel. I think maybe in school, you know, when we were doing art, yeah. we always had an easel. Have you differentiated, Barry, between the... Um, I haven't really, but I have left in some places, if I zoom in a little bit, look, I've left a little bit of the blue gap between the two. Oh, right. But you don't have to, because some of them I haven't, because we're going to lighten them. This is our mid-tone. It's a shame to lose them that we've brought in. It is, yeah. yeah. So a little bit of a gap between petals can help. Will you be able to be updated while you're away? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, years ago, you couldn't have a mobile phone in hospital, could you? No. Now it's um, quite accepted. So I'm going to let that dry. But you can see how vibrant the paint is, can't you? No, that'll be all right because you're, you're going to add more no, light it. to it afterwards. So this is kind of your your mid tone. I like this. I'm enjoying this. It's going to take some going to cover the blue totally. So you might as well let the blue. And I've I've chosen this color blue because it's actually the direct complementary opposite to cadmium yellow. Ultramarine and cadmium yellow are complementary opposites. So. Um, it will give us dull, dark shades. I mean, it, it would go a little bit green, but it doesn't really matter. Not for this. It's different to, it, 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 doesn't it feel different to acrylics and watercolor? It's not gloopy like acrylics, mm. but it covers differently than watercolor does. I might prefer this to watercolour. Al already? Like yeah. I like the way it goes on. I like the photographs as well. Mm, me too. It feels like it, I'm in more in control of what I'm doing. Yeah, I, I, I do it. use much smaller brushes when I work with gouache. I, I don't use massive ones, unless I'm covering a really large area, but then I try to use the background colour that's already there. So, I mean, this is just pastel paper we're working on. Other times I'll work on mixed media card. Um, very rarely, we did one, and I think it might be downstairs in my five pound basket. We did one of the um, Christ the Redeemer statue in Brazil. And it was by moonlight and the background sky was a pale turquoise teal. Mm. And I couldn't find any card or paper that color. 
so I used watercolour paper and we used gouache to tint the whole page really? but we had to use quite a lot of paint and um, to get a very flat matte consistent sky uh, but it did it worked quite well But I mean, watercolour is very transparent. Even the artist quality opaque watercolour is not as opaque as gouache. And it is to do with the level of chalk in it. But it really stands out. And it covers nicely, doesn't it? Mm. Oh, it's silky, isn't it? Yeah. What the, the trouble is when you're learning, the hardest thing is, is working out that the colour you put on isn't necessarily the colour that it's going to stay. Um, but that, that just comes with practice, really. Trying to find some other gouache. to its own is using um, dark coloured papers and cards. Online people don't need to see this but you can. Um, so this one was a couple of weeks ago and that's on green cards. Oh I like that. Oh look at that. Um, that's on black watercolour paper. Oh that's gorgeous. Oh I love the darkness in the Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So that's nice. That's on green watercolour. Mm -hmm. oh, these are all gouache. That's black watercolour. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That's, okay, that's green. That's on green. And that's on bright green craft cards. Oh, gosh, that you, you can always touch that. So you that. can really get a good, a good array of depth. You're in vogue, aren't you? We're on vogue, yeah. on trend. Yeah. Bump the drums. Bump the drums. I spent my whole life hating my drum, and I was born in the wrong, wrong time, I think. Yeah, big bums are in, aren't they? Well, I think they're paying for big bums, aren't they? they what are. the Kardashians look like? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, they have implants. Yeah. It's also good for portraits, not for gouache. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Green. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Incredible. Did, were they from the picture or from yeah. the sitting? Yeah, from a picture, because that's, that's just from a random photo, and that I did for Angela Lansbury's 95th. Wow. Um, what I've stopped doing famous people, um, and there's a, the reason is because they keep dying. Within two weeks of me doing a portrait oh of no. them, they die. <laughs> Don't do a portrait of the Queen. Well, I did a class on the Queen and she got COVID within a, a oh within no. three days. Do I need to add more petals? Do I need to do anything to those petals? No, not yet. Okay. Leave them as they Leave are. Leave them as they are. No, okay. we did um, Captain Tom. He died the day after. I did Betty White. She died a week after. She was an Oh, I love Betty White. Very sassy. Yeah. Um, yeah, did the Queen. She got COVID. Um, I think we did somebody else and they died. 
Um, yeah, I, I there was a, there was that um, evening thing that she was at as yeah. well recently. She was very sassy in that. I loved yeah. it. I think she's that at the. Shred. I don't. Shred. I don't give a care phase of her reign because yeah. I mean, she could do what she likes now. Yeah. I after seventy that years. That yeah. Though. Yeah. Well, <laughs> after the um, was it Alan Titchmarsh? It was like the yeah. beating heart for seventy years. Is the that and she just went. Like, yeah. so, so what? Yeah, I suppose it is my heart. It is beating. And then Alexis Ale said to her, thank you for choosing this over yeah. the opening of Parliament. And she went and she waved at him. Because yeah. I'm sure she'd much yeah. prefer to be there than at the opening of Parliament. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Send Char so, so she can do that now. She can send Charles off to do all the bits she doesn't want to do. Yeah. Yeah. And then do, just only do fun bits. Yeah. I think she's getting sassier in her old age, which I love. Sassy Queen is all, is what it's about. Right. Now, is yours going on, um, Trish? Yeah, I've won, I think we're on the last petal. Excellent. Because we can do the middle um, of the flower, and then we can put highlights of the petals on afterwards, which is which is really, really good. Um, I'm going to use the same brush. I tend to use this little flat brush for everything. Like so it. useful. Um, I'm just using burnt sienna. I have given you burnt sienna, haven't I? Yeah. That's that's. <laughs> and I'm just doing it in little dots and dabs because it's going to mix with the coloured paper because that's going to show through and it's going to give a slightly darker brown to start with. But I'm just putting it on as little dots. So the difference between we're using direct colours. Yeah. We? we will mix at some point. Okay. But the colour mixing's the same. Yeah, we don't need to yet. Uh, we will be mixing the colours for the centre and for highlights and for the greenery. Okay, so we just dab, dab, dab. Dab, yeah, dabbing, dab, over. dabbing over. And if you go over your petals, it doesn't really matter because we're going to be painting more on the top. It's just nice and freeing to work in gouache. So this burnt sienna is just going all over the... All over the centre to start with, yeah. And it'll look darker because the ultramarine underneath will cause that. So when you're saying dabbing, are we leaving slight bits? I'm not leaving any bits, but... It, each time you dab it'll be slightly more opaque I see, yes. so it will give a it just gives a bit of an interesting texture that's all Well, that's nice. Very complimentary, actually. Is he gone? just showing them all the different ones we've done mm -hmm. with the different coloured card and everything because it's just so much easier to just get a piece of coloured card. Like perhaps a mixed coloured card. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well have we got any? We've got the That's we've got the um paint on. Have we got any of those left? It's not bright down. colours, no. The the the, the paint on ones they do grey. We do have packs of cards as well. Yes, yeah. Because this is pastel paper I'm using today. Oh, oh, we have packs of pastel paper. Yeah. What different? Packs of different yeah. So we've got pastel paper. We've got two different pads with different colours in. 
uh, mainly blues and greens and greys. It's kind of subtle, aren't they? Yeah. Um, and then we do the paint on paper, which has got white, black, grey, and blue. Yeah. All dull colours. Mm. And then we've just got packs of craft card, which I also use for gouache. It's I I just love it. It because it's you, you really can't paint on anything. Me the nose working all right. That was just that's just one coat of cad yellow. Good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So that's we want a bit of the blue to come through because that gives us some of the I dark bits. Are these all through the Monty Tree online? Yeah, they're all online. Yeah, yeah it's on it's on the that link on the on my own art page. I link the shop app site for all they're all three are on one and on the on, on the shop shop happy page they're all under mindful classes and then you can book your calls for the colour mixing or the tree or all three so if I mix because the red the, the center's quite reddish isn't it so if we go with a bit of burnt sienna and a bit of cad red and a small amount of ultramarine we'll get a really weird purple grey that I'm going to add a small amount of white to so you can either just do ultramarine and cadmium red or throw in a little bit of burnt sienna and a bit of white and then I'm just dabbing that the in the center of the flower it stands out more what I found is the camera seems to pick up the chalk tones more than in real life so I'm me going oh it's just a subtle color but on the screen it looks huge and really vibrant so this is white with ultramarine and a, and a lot of cad red. White. Yeah, so if you make your purple first, a bit of an aubergine colour from yeah. ultramarine and cad red, then add a little bit more cad red in it, and then add a little bit of uh, white to lighten it. Yeah. And then I'm just doing a few little dabs right in the middle part of the circle, because it's like a, a dark colour, then a yellow colour, then an orange colour. Oh, right, this bit that's like just that, that yeah, it's it, yeah, just that little bit there. And then it's got kind of a, a weird yellowy orange around it, which you can do with adding cad yellow and white. I'm just using the same brush on the corner. Because I never realised that the, the, the centre of the sunflower is basically just small flowers. What is it? Yeah, it's just really... T like like a broccoli is just a head of flower bulb, flower heads, isn't it? A broccoli. Yeah. But we just eat it before it flowers. Yeah. So I've added a little bit of cad yellow and white to that mix to go slightly lighter on the outside. And then we'll do burnt sienna and white dabs for the main part of it. That's looking nice. Trish and Viv. Are you enjoying working on it? Mm. Yeah. It's, it's totally different though, isn't it? Does it feel different to you? Uh, mixing the colours feel different because I'm obviously making them instead of putting too much on. Yes. Because yeah, you don't want it too runny no, 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 and no, you no, don't no. want it too thick. Yeah. I've realised that, yeah, that's... So that good. takes a bit of practice. But, I mean, don't forget, this is your first one and you're going to be doing a painting in under two hours, so... Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, cad yellow and... And you can, if you mix cad yellow into some of that mix on your tile, 
um, just a little bit of it and then add a bit more white. Soon coffee break, so don't worry. The torture will soon be over. And then it's burnt sienna and white for the texture. But what's nice about um, gouache is that it's opaque, isn't it? So you can you don't have to worry about light against darks or anything like that. You don't have to work in a different way. You can work straight onto a dark colour, which I think Viv you'll like because of working in acrylics. Yeah. But it's more instant because it dries faster. Um, in a in a different way. What colour have you gone about the? Um uh, but just burnt sienna and white it goes kind of a, a, an orangey flesh tone and if you just add extra bits of white every now and again it just feels nice and textured are you finding it feels that it, does it feel any different to you Viv? Oh yeah, oh good. I think what's nice about gouache is that it is, in a way, more portable than acrylics. Because, you know, you can buy the palettes of them already dried, or like I have, I've squeezed them into an empty tin. Um, and I haven't got, like with acrylics, if I was going to paint out in the field or whatever I'd have to take all my tubes a big messy palette then it's like what do I do with the palette once it's I've finished and you know whereas with gouache I haven't got any of that Did you mainly work in Trish? Was it acrylics? Pardon? Uh, did you mainly work in acrylics in your previous group, or was it, was it a bit of a anything? Mix of everything, really. Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah, I must admit I didn't really necessarily like the acrylics too much. Um, maybe it was just a subject. I don't yeah. know. But it's a while since I've done watercolour, so I can just have a, a little bash at that again. You know, I think I've got one on my list. Yeah, good. Um, yeah, but I'm, yeah, Because the more water you add, the less opaque it is. So that's the thing to remember. If you dilute it too much, you will lose some of the strength of colour. So are you officially retired now then? I am. How does that feel? <laughs> I felt really weird on my last day. I didn't I didn't expect it to feel quite as it did. Oh, okay. Especially when I have to like hammer keys back in and It's a big thing, isn't it? 
much bigger, bigger than you think. In what respect do you not feel that your effort was felt a lot more emotional? You don't realise about how, how, how a big part of your life it is though, do you really? Because you, no. you go to work and you make and you don't always enjoy going to work, but it's the same as you don't always enjoy visiting family members, do you? But no. it's sort of you miss them when they've gone or what have you. So it is it it is big. I, I was seeing somebody on a social media thing saying, Oh, it's rubbish to not enjoy um, all this do a job you love and you'll uh, not work a day in your life. She said, it's rubbish. You just work whatever job you can tolerate enough to earn money to live the life that you want. But I, I really don't have that view. I... Where, where do I see the quote? Um, live... Don't spend the weekends sort of running away from the life that you've got. Use it to enjoy the life that you have. So, you know, what spare yeah. time you have... And that's what I do, because I do love my job. I mean, it doesn't always bring much money in, but I, I do really love it. So it doesn't feel like work in the same sense as, oh, I've got to do a painting again today. Um, yeah. I really do enjoy it, and I'm, I'm glad about that, because if I was at home not working, all I'd be doing is what I'm doing now, but not earning any money from it. I'd yeah. still be painting or I'd still be creating a video or a tutorial or what have you because it's what I've done ever since I was little. Right, we're going to put some highlights on our petals now. I'm going to still use this same brush. Um, and I'm going to mix lemon yellow and cadmium yellow together a little bit, but a bit more lemon yellow. And a tiny bit of white. Now I'm trying to work out where the, the light is just coming from above, isn't it? Really. So both yellows together. And this is where I'm looking at just the immediate highlights. Both yellows together and a little bit of white, same brush. And I'm just painting. I probably won't mix anywhere near enough paint because I never do. And I'm adding it just to the immediate highlights of your petals. So where, where you're looking at the image and you're seeing where the, the lighter bands are. And don't worry about blending in or anything yet. So I'm creating it quite blocky to start with. So if you think the colour that we've already put down, the first colour that we put down, is our mid-tone. So we're adding highlights to that now. start standing out a little bit more and the reason why I've said we're not really going to blend it in just yet is because the way it dries you need to kind of look at it for a little bit to see if because it, it might blend in itself automatically you never know
but you might find you can build up a level of detail in gouache that you've not been able to in acrylics right. and you can't really do in watercolour because it's too transparent but with gouache it really does give you a bit of an all-rounder I, I just love it. It's my fa one of my favourite things. Um, and um, I've, I've managed to persuade quite a few people to do gouache over the years. And because it is so much more versatile. It does feel quite chalky at times when it dries, doesn't it? I don't know if you're finding that. So it is difficult to say what it, what gouache is like because it's neither watercolor or acrylic, is it? Really, it's got it's got its own feel and style. And you can always add a bit more white if you want other aspects to stand out a little bit more. So white is your friend. It just looks so much more 3D, even though I'll just pick this up so I can show you a bit more close to. Mm. There's no blending in that. Yeah. It just works really well. But if you did mm. want to blend, right. you just use a clean, damp brush and blend the two in. Right. Works really well, doesn't it? Mm. So, cup of tea time. Trish, do you want to, is it a tea, oh, tea you know, please. tea, Viv? 
Uh, could I have the urgent cappuccino? A cappuccino? You can indeed. Brush or the fact that I feel like I'm colouring in or what. I don't know. There's something really nice about it. Yeah. My cat has got that many cucumbers. Yours is so much different to us. I've got a lot of blue showing through mine. I've got to do something about that. Because it, it, it's funny because we feel like we've got a lot over there, but 
we first went, started taking stuff over in September, so you were planning for slightly cooler climbs. Um, so yeah, it's just a little bit of an odd kind of feeling, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I haven't really noticed yet. I haven't had enough to do it to work. <laughs> Just put some of this cab yellow in because it <laughs> feels not very green. Yeah, my green one's fantastic. My blue one's fantastic. Oh, oh, it's such a terrible night last night. Did I sleep? I was tired, I was exhausted, you know, everything. And yeah. Made in bed. take a night out tonight. And also sweating, I think it's not just my menopause stress, but sweating it out of me, you know. Oh really? <sighs> yeah, we have to feel darker as well, though, aren't we? Yeah. Not a bit right, it's downstairs, aren't we? <laughs> I just had to put another cap together on mine because it was looking a bit green, so I just had to spruce it up. Well, that's alright though, because you got you can do that with with the rash if you knock your paint water. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's yeah, nice I, as well. I'm yeah, I'm really enjoying the. I don't know it's what different, isn't it? How's yours going, Viv? I'm quite swell. I'll see when we're finished. Show Barry your little. I've got a bit of green in mine, but I'm not I'm not overly worried because you can add I'm gonna just dunk my biscuit. You can add some darker elements in, you know, the shading. So if I mix oh burnt sienna and a little bit of ultramarine. Are you? Mm. Okay. I can give you some more. Sorry. You've got quite a bit of paint. 
think I'm, I'm managing. I don't know where I am with Glenn. Yeah, I think I'm all right. I'm okay with it. You can leave yellow and white, don't you? And um, can, I, can I have yellow and white? You, let me, I'll take this one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Okay. Bert, Sienna, and Mark. A bit of ultramarine to give us a, a dark brown. Oh, and in which case, then, please, can I have some more black burnt sienna? Well, I really have to just... Yeah. Yeah, I think I need some more. Well, it's kind of all mixed together. Yeah, mine's gone a little bit psychedelic. Well, I'm my, I'm my blue. In fact, I'm probably... <laughs> I should have said yes. I'll have to say again. I'm mixing the colours on this. It, it feels so better. Somehow, I don't know what the, how the, it the tile. Me. I don't know what it is, but it's nice. Because these are only um, ceramic bathroom tiles. Mm. Well, I got one at home, but it's, it's my son had tiled the bathroom, but it was that uh, was tiled in about a four size, unfortunately. <laughs> So what I'm doing with this is I'm putting it in the darker elements, but let me if I clean my brush, I can show you what I mean. What so I've, that's ultramarine and burnt sand. It's a really dark brown, and I'm not using much. And then with a clean, damp brush, I'm brushing it up into the yellow so it mixes in. And I'm not doing loads of this. So we're we using a really thin brush. I'm using the same little flat brush. Oh, because I like it. So it works quite nicely if it's all blended together. So just going up through the middle? Yeah, because it's darker at the base, isn't it? And then it gets a little bit lighter. As it gets further up. But it just adds an extra, an extra element of depth. And then we can... Um, work on leaves and things it's always difficult to darken yellow because if you use black to darken yellow you end up with green and if you use too much brown, it just looks dead. So you kind of have to be a little bit sparing. Because it's nice that it picks up a little bit, and it and, you know it picks up the yellow that's underneath it as well, and it mixes that together. It 
it all just helps make it a bit more three-dimensional. And if none of it works, all you have to do is just let it dry and you can paint back over it again. See, now, there are some clouds in this sky, but I'm hesitant to add any, because it can be a bit scary. But I tell you what, I can show you how I would do it, and then you can decide if you want to try it. How does that sound? That sounds like <laughs> I might have to add a little bit of cloud over my, moon, my red blob. Oh, you got a red blob. Got a red blob. You could turn it into a bee. You might have to because <laughs> it's in the perfect place for a bee. Is it? Oh, you see, I haven't seen your red blob. Oh, it is in the perfect place for a bee. I've got a bit dark here, haven't I? Do I need to put a bit of... Yeah, you yellow. can add a bit of yellow, cad yellow over the top of it yeah. and then just blend it together with a damp brush. Yeah. It works well, though, doesn't it, build, building the colours up? Because you couldn't really do this in watercolours and you certainly couldn't do it in acrylics because once the undercolour mm. was dry... It's always it's always interesting when you have your first experience of a of a different medium because your brain's constantly trying to make connections with other things that you're already familiar with, isn't it? Yeah. And I'm not actually sure that I think gouache is on its own. It it because it's not one thing or another. It's a bit like pastels as well in a way. So there's just so many things that it's similar to. That it's basically just on its own. Stick a bit more cad yellow over the top. So the cad yellow on the top will just really. It, it, it all changes when the green goes on and everything because at the moment the yellow is so dominant isn't it yeah um that there's nothing else happening in the picture but um i'll show you in a sec um because we've got about 40 minutes of the lesson left so that's enough it should be enough to do some green and a bit of fluffy clouds if we decide to well i'll be doing it anyway it just means we have to buy some gouache to kind of finish off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't got any white tubes at the minute. That's the problem. I've run out, and so I didn't realise. I've though. got the. I've got the. Yeah, I have got some basic sets in. So they got white in them. Mhm. Mm but what you can do, you see, is if you've got watercolours that you haven't worked out how you wanted them to you can use gouache on the top of them you know like if your tree's gone too dark and you meant to have some highlights on you can just make some light green gouache highlights and stick it on the top technically it's mixed media but who cares really in this day and age when i first started teaching there was no such thing as mixed media wasn't that no you couldn't do it and that wasn't that long ago could do watercolour and pen 
Or you could do, a, a, even acrylics wasn't, it was kind of scowled upon acrylics was. It was uh, really seen as a student medium. Uh, watercolour and oils were the two biggies that you would put on a pedestal instantly, whether you were any good or not. So yeah, you couldn't do mixed media. You'd never see any exhibitions of mixed media. Why? And no art teachers would teach mixed media. Because it was too school-like. So the art world has changed a lot over the last couple of decades. And I'm not quite sure what's driven that change. I think it's just each generation is making it more of a, a need. And now, yeah, you know, the, the, the range of dry media in terms of markers and pencils is, is huge compared to how it used to be. Mm. My um, grandson got a scholarship, an art scholarship to Flotsam School. Oh, lovely. And he's, um, he, uh, for his birthday, I bought him, oh, I can't remember what they're called, but he, he say about pens, actually, his mum is really good, she sent me a link to Amazon and I yeah, just yeah. do it. But it's some thicker packs of, like, I just call felt pens, but they're not. Yes. But they yeah, it just goes to show that, as you say... The yeah, there's, there's alcohol markers now, so there's Copic, we sell, and Pro Marker, um, and they uh, you get a chisel tip and a bullet oh point, gosh. and fashion designers use them, and uh, but there's also watercolour marker pens, uh, which is watercolour in a pen. Um, I, there's, honestly, there's just... it's. It's mind blowing just how much is on the market now, and people come to a little shop like us and expect us to have all of that yeah. in and to have us at the same price as Amazon. Um, we can't. We can't. Yeah. I mean, I've got about forty-five, fifty grand's worth of stock down in that shop. Yeah, I can imagine. That I've had to pay for in advance. Yes. Right. I'm going to do something with the sky that you may or may not want to do. So I'm getting um, the larger of the flat brushes, which isn't really that big. And I'm wetting part of the paper. I know I don't, you, you can't do too much because this is quite thin paper. So if I wet a big bit of paper there and then pick up a little bit of white and make it really runny, I'm going to treat it like watercolour look and create some misty clouds what you'll find is it's much heavier than watercolor so it won't spread as much but if I do a bit up here wet a larger area than I want bit of runny paint give the brush a twist so basically I'm just tinting the paper a little bit But too much water and if you go back to it you'll end up with little balls appearing and, and you'll wear through your paper if you're not careful so, so just, just wet your paper and then make some runny white and drop that in and when that dries it will change again yeah wrong color might be useful for some ele other elements but uh, really yeah needs to be like milk so the packs are supposed to work has it got these colors in it it's in not no the, the the cheaper pack the student pack which is about seven pound twenty um it's got similar colors but not the real ones because you're using artist quality here okay. whereas the artist quality gouache packs are about 50 quid um but then there are um solid versions uh, you know where it's already pre-dried that Karen Dash do that has similar colours in as well so there's quite a lot of option now yeah yeah really wet so what I do is I wet the paper first then add the runny water colour, you know, the water gouache with it, so. 
Hang on, I'll come, I'll come and rescue. So if you wet the paper, you can drop in a bit of white. Did you did your paper dry or did you not wet it that much? Well, I've already got the white on there. Uh uh. Okay. Let me rescue it. Hang on. how it spreads but yeah because it's a heavier pigment yeah it spreads in a different way to watercolor you see watercolor would just go straight off wouldn't it yeah but because i've gone really really pale with my white look it's just slightly tinted the paper yeah rather than gone too strong but you don't have to do it no let me see your flower please oh my goodness <laughs> So I, I, yeah, I. Some of my petals are better than others. So yeah, yeah. just looking. But you could add uh, more white and yellow to do some immediate highlights. Yeah. You could bring them forward, especially these. So how did you get all those like spiky bits there? Just with the corner of the brush? Yeah. Just the corner of the brush. But you could use any brush really. Would do it. I mean, I've done it all with the same little flat brush. Mm. See, yeah. I just dabbed it, but I most probably dabbed it with the. Well, it, you, yeah, and if your paint's a bit too wet, it's going to spread in a different way. Okay. It's, and that's why it's difficult and different compared to other media, because it's getting the consistency mm -hmm. um, to do what you want it to do, isn't it? Which is always going to be the case when you're working with something new. But you do need to really wet your paper. But you can you can be subtle or not subtle, it doesn't matter. And don't forget your drink. When that's dry, we can mix a bit of green, light green, and then dark green. I'm just going to get the hairdryer on there. My paper's gone all curly. How's that dried now, Viv? Has that gone better? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, quite nice, oh, that is quite nice, yeah. It's, it's nice working on coloured paper though, isn't it? Because it saves such a lot of hassle. I mean, imagine us trying to paint a, a, that blue sky. It'd be so hard to do, wouldn't it? Yeah. Especially on this, on, on maybe a big painting, it wouldn't be so bad. But on something really small, it is tricky.
there's actually sort of three tones of green, isn't it? There's like the mid green, then you've got the really white green, and then the dark green shadows. So there's three different shades. Um, it's going to be lemon yellow um, with ultramarine. <laughs> right, I don't need to run. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know that I should be let loose and running. Don't I, I think, do you know what? I think it's that, it's that table and chair. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to move Let's Christine see. next Tuesday <laughs> and see if it has any difference in how much she can wear. So ultramarine and lemon yellow. You're going to need quite a bit of this. But we're going to do the mid-tone again first. So slightly more lemon than blue. My sunflower's looking like autumn leaves now. <laughs> but I don't mind. You see, the thing is... You can't really... You can't... Sh like again, It's one of those pictures again where you can't shove something in, in front of it, can you? So I'm just doing the parts of the sides of the leaves that are facing us and this seems quite vibrant but I know it's going to dull down a fraction as it dries. Yeah, it won't stay that way though because the blue underneath will dull it down and it dries more matte. Right, so anyway. The bits, because you can see the leaves are curled, aren't they? So I'm doing the ones that are closest to us. So, so how did you make the green? Lemon yellow and ultramarine. More lemon yellow than ultramarine. And if it's if it is too bright, if you add a bit of water to it, it'll dull it down nicely, and let the blue show through, and that will give you a slightly darker green. Which, in some ways, saves you having to mix too much of a dark green. No, that's one green. It just it's darker because I've added more water to it, so the the blue paper is dulling it down. Oh. Clever, isn't it? Sorry, I obviously wasn't listening to what you. That's all right. You 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 you're, you're, you're in the zone. Completely in the zone. Do not worry. I've I've discovered over 25 years of teaching that I have to repeat myself a lot so I'm fine about it I have I have some classes where someone in the you know pre-covid days where I'd have eight or nine in the class and I'd say right we're going to use ultramarine and burnt sienna now and then one person would go ultramarine and what and I go burnt sienna and I go okay and then somebody else would go sorry I wasn't listening was it what colors and I go ultramarine and burnt sienna and then somebody else would go um, ultramarine and, and uh, burnt sienna and then somebody else would go did you say ultramarine? Yes. And what colour? Burnt sienna. Okay. So I'm fine, really. 
What you need to do is you need to have something up on, uh, like on the screen. Yes. Yeah. The yeah. colours that you're using now yeah. are. Yes. <laughs> It's funny because when when I was trying to teach my mom how to use a smartphone, I didn't have that level of patience. And she'd say to me, well, why are you so patient with your students? And I'd say, well, you pay me £12 for a session and I'm sure I'll be much nicer in trying to teach her how to use a smartphone. Because she couldn't use it. Bless her. She worked quite well with it in the end, actually. She got onto Twitter and everything. She was really into Twitter. My mum used to. No, 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 because they're going to be lighter. My mum used to have a habit of of really stabbing her finger at her smartphone, and I say, "Oh, stop picking at it like a chicken on corn, and and just touch it, just just gently, gently." She's very impatient. My mum with stuff. She thought she should get it straight away. We tried to teach her a laptop, but we gave up very quickly because she couldn't work a laptop either. And the amount of time I phone her and then I'd get a random person answering because she didn't know how to answer it while she was in the supermarket. So she used to ask any member of staff, <laughs> can you answer the phone for me, please? Really? Yeah. Oh, bless her. She wasn't even that old. I mean, she's only 72 when she died, but she just couldn't get her head around technology at all. And there weren't even, when, I mean, my dad died when I was 19, so we didn't really have mobile phones and internet and all of that then, so he escaped all of the technology. It's amazing how things have changed in such a small time frame, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it? Well, when you look at when we were at school, there was anybody who told us that, like, our whole life would be on a telephone. You know. Because it is, isn't it? And... and I, I, th I think I think people do give kids a bit of a you know they say oh they're addicted to their phones but we've kind of made it that way haven't we you mm. know we, we you know a lot of parents shove them in front of the TV or the smartphone or the iPad it's a cheap form of babysitting mm. you know they grow up on YouTube in schools they're using apps and smart boards and yeah. all of this kind of stuff uh, you know it's it's obvious and, and the algorithms like Facebook and TikTok it, it creates dopamine on short form videos so you're, you're addicted to it on purpose so yeah yeah because you get a, you get a really good hit every time you see a video so you scroll on through and then you get another video hit and then you know it's um it's amazing that's why it takes about half an hour to get out of bed once i get on my facebook and it shows me these reels i go yeah what's that there's a handy hat. Yeah. Oh, there's this. And, oh, and yeah, it's like made handy. so the next one's rolled up straight away for you. So you, you stay on for so much longer. So it's it's all automated on purpose to make you addicted to mm. their sites because they make money off you. Oh, Just you, you yeah, because then it, it could be a sponsored ad or something. So um, if you watch it, then Facebook gets money. I mean, it is a business at the end of the day, but I think um, we've all slightly been conned with social media because it's not even that social a lot of the time, is it? No. It's more antisocial. I just stalk a few people and that's about it, really. Watch a lot of dog and cat videos. a lot of rubbish at times <clears throat> so I haven't done my lightest color which is going to have a bit of white in with it 
So I've got a really white colour and then we're going to make a, a nice um, dull shadow colour. But hopefully you'll look at this in the morning and you'll go, ooh, can't believe I painted that, that's really nice. The last three pictures we've done here of our house. Yeah. Oh, how lovely. So you must have liked them then. It's always difficult though, isn't it? Because you, you've come from a previous tutored class. I, th I think with, with lessons like this, it's always, it's not just what you're learning. It's if you get on with the person as well, isn't it? I think there's a, yeah. you've got to get on with your tutor. And whenever we've got anybody new or interested, I always say, watch my free videos. See if you like how I actually teach and talk. And then, and then book on. So it's not a shock. I've forgotten where you used to go. Is it Brack? No, not Bodicat. Bloxham. Uh, uh, yeah, Bloxham. The joiner's arms of Bloxham. Well, that was some time ago now, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a long time ago. And was that Hannah? Yes. So you're going the top part of this is you're going quite white. I, I've added a bit of white to it, yeah, to just um, try and highlight it a little bit. Although part of the other side, uh, the massive leaf, is quite a dark shaded area, so we can we can play about with it. Really hot. So we're going to New York for like a week on Thursday, and stuff with my son has been showing me temperatures, and it's just going to get really, really hot, which I really don't like. Oh, I I'll find the end of the umbrella. Oh my God, we must love it, didn't we? Well, we must get some beds and yeah. lie on tin foil, <laughs> put on cooking oil. <laughs> me and Chris, one year we when we used to work together many years ago. Really? So that when the sun came out, we'd be the brownest people, the most tanned people there were at work. And the first day the sun went out, we went out at lunchtime, sat outside. We were the brownest when we went out, and when we came back in, we were painless. Really? <laughs> yeah. I just don't um, tan well no. at all. See, being a ginge, I don't, I avoid any form of sunlight. If possible, because I go, I used to go a nice tan colour when I was little, but as I've got older, I just go lobster. Yeah, well, it's not that it would get burnt anyway. I've started wearing fat fifty since I had my eyebrows tattooed. She said, "Don't go out in anything less than fifty; they'll all stay." Oh, uh, really? And it's always it's a it's, well, it's a good thing to wear fat fifty all year round, really, isn't it? Yeah. So I. 
around my face now. Well, you just it, it just it's too late. So it's okay. I think so, because everyone's away, yeah, aren't they? Wondering. Yeah, there's no, there's no shows to, okay, so it looks well, like it. In. Yeah, you basically are. You're colouring in and drawing with your, drawing with your brush. I have a dye test of, um, good well, the the studenty ones are about seven pound fifty. What for set? Student to student one, so they're not as opaque, but they're still yeah. going to be more opaque than watercolors, so yeah. they're not bad. Um, and then the professional ones are about 50 quid. Oh, right. Or you can just buy loose tubes in hot colors, but as I say, I haven't got any white, but it's nice, isn't it? Are you enjoying it? Oh, mm. I'm absolutely really nice. loving it. So, last time I was in Italy, I put lots of postcards. Oh yeah. So I've, yeah. I've taken different postcards and sent some people to take one through. Nice. And they're like, when I look at them, they're not acrylic. You couldn't. I don't think acrylic would be suggested. No. But watercolour, I don't like. No. So this, so is this could work. Perfect for it. And you could use some coloured backgrounds or something, and that would yeah. save you a lot of yeah, that's what I'm a lot of hassle. Do. No, that's fine. You know, I don't mind that. So I'll be doing some really dark tones that are almost like a, a purple um, in a min. But I do think this is so different to any other medium, isn't it? It's really hard to describe because it really isn't like acrylics and it really isn't like watercolour. I'm kind of sad that I've never just come to it. Well, considering they've been around for like 500 years, <laughs> it, it is sad, isn't it? Yeah. But, but then... I've never even heard of it. I, I think a lot of tutors, and, and it's no disrespect to tutors, um... A lot of them are just artists who try to supplement their income by teaching, you know? So they're really only familiar with what they already know. Whereas because I am actually just a tutor, I kind of have to explore and develop my skill set kind of thing. Yeah. So it is, it is very different in a way. So there'll be some art, you know, it's the same as colours and everything. A, a, an art teacher or a, an artist will only know the colours or the mixes that they need to get what they normally paint like. So they may not know other ways of doing things. Yeah. And as I say, that's not no detriment to anybody. It's just how it is. You stick with what you know, don't you? <laughs> now you know. Is it best to book classes online then, Sally? No, you can just chat to Jackie. She'll have the. She'll have the. She's got the diary downstairs actually at the minute, so she can say what spaces there are and everything. Um, so online, we the way we do it, online classes are booked online, right. and real life classes are booked in real life. In real life. Makes sense. Otherwise, we can't. We just can't cope. <laughs> I mean, we never had an online shop before the pandemic, so we had to try and 
work out how to do anything um, and teach online, which we never really did before either. So it's been a, a massive learning mm -hmm. curve for us. In a nice way, it's a, it's a good challenge because you do get stuck in a rut. So I've still got the really, really dark tones to make for the shaded bits of the green. It would take a lot longer if we had to colour our background as well, mm. wouldn't it? You know, that would be the the big thing. If you like more stylistic stuff, I suppose gouache works really well, doesn't it? Because it does give you vibrant colours. But you have what what I think is the selling point is that you can go back in and reblend, which you can't do in acrylics, can you? You've no. you've lost it. You just have to go over the top of the acrylics. Yeah. But with this, you could put a highlight on and then blend it back in, or a, a shadow blend it back in. Um, so to me, it gives you a much greater flexibility. a really dark green out of ultramarine and a bit of cad yellow but I will be adding a little bit of black to that because we haven't used any black yet and this should darken it to make a very very dark green and that's for inside some of the leaves or where it's a little bit shaded You've done two different things today. You've sketched with pastels mm. and you've used gouache for the first time.
So ultramarine, cad yellow, and a little bit of black really works well for the dark green. But I've noticed my centre needs to be a bit darker, I think. That's what's... I'm going to try mixing a bit of black and red together. It starts to make it stand out more, doesn't it? Yeah. But you can't always judge it until afterwards when it's dried and then you yeah. go, oh no, that needs to be darker, that needs to be lighter, or that needs to be actual black rather than green, and you know, all of that kind of stuff. And because it's so opaque and you can blend in, you haven't really got to be that scared of anything because you can just cover it back up again later. That's what I like. It's the, I, I find it's the darks that really do make a huge difference to a picture. The more you can make a, a, a strong contrast, the more solid things look. And also it makes the light bits look lighter if you've got darker dark bits. Up so you can have a closer look. That's nice, actually. Oh, that's beautiful, this plant. Oh, wow. But you can see how dark <laughs> I've had to go. Yeah. Um, and it's just work. The darks really bring out the light. But I think that's oh, wow. I think they're lovely. Yeah, I've really enjoyed doing this. As you can tell by my silence. <laughs> yeah, me too. It is quite absorbing, isn't it? Could do. It would be quite a ladybird, isn't it? It would be a ladybird, wouldn't it? It would be light size on something like this, isn't it? So it would be. Oh, 
I just think it's a really nice medium, isn't it? It's very different. Yeah. It's hard to describe how different it is. But of course what you can do is you struggle to get highlights or white enough with your paint. You could either use your white pastel pencil to give you a few highlights mm. or, or a white gel pen when you get home. Yeah, Because it all links together. Oh, I'm quite happy with that. We've mainly just used one brush as well today. Yes, we have. So is this your last one, Viv, for a while? Yeah, it is, but I might join online. Online, okay. If you struggle, you can always give us a message and we'll try and sort you out. Okay. And will you be coming while... I will. Yeah. Definitely. I will. <laughs> See, we pick quite a few people up that, are, like with the mill, they just that they don't want to do ten week courses, which you have to do at no, the mill, because you don't know whether you're going to be here or there or doing other stuff. Don't they? they do and if you spent what 180 quid or whatever on a 10 week course yeah and you've only done sort of half of it. yeah it's not really worth it so we don't do courses for that reason or if we do they're either three to four or five weeks yeah. maximum which you've got a bit more control over then because it is difficult Especially if you are, you know, retired or semi-retired or whatever, you do want more flexibility mm. in your life. Mm. Well, I just want a bit off the off piece. Yeah, off an off piece. Yeah. Um, I'm actually surprised. Well, there you see. Since you've been coming here, I've got you hardly drawing, and you're happy going off piece. Yeah. That's really nice. That's not too bad, is it? That's not too bad at all. Yes, it is. I'm just... Oh, wow, that's lovely. Oh, yeah, I'm happy with that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, um, some of it could be a bit better, but I'm generally, I'm very, I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, but it. I mean, when you think that this is your first time it, with a new medium and from start to finish in two hours, you know, that's no mean feat. Professionals wouldn't be able to cope in that kind of stuff. I love it. Thank you, Barry. No, it's a pleasure. Yeah, I enjoyed I was a bit daunted at first because when I got so much drawing. <laughs> oh, lovely. No, that's really nice. I'm doing that thing now where you suddenly you should be. You, you've been a just adder. I am. That's lovely. Happier than when you started, yeah. 
So you like gouache? Yes. Yeah. We were only saying, we're disappointed that it's only going to be a once a month affair. <laughs> I know, I know. It's only because I've spent the last eight months talking to myself a lot of the time, so it's not been financially, it's not really worth me sitting for two hours <laughs> talking to nobody. No, I understand. <laughs> Is that and going to be an evening course? So, well, yeah, it's going to be Monday evening once a month, 7 till 9. Um, and it's all in the new booklet anyway. Um, so, yeah, you could um, you could book it so you use, you know, we provide the materials as well, mm. which would be quite good. Yeah, see, I know I can see a few errors in mine, but... But what's good about it is because it's gouache is that you will be able to paint yeah, over it later and you, yeah yeah you can once it totally dries you can look at it mm. at another time and yeah. go oh do you know yeah, what because my flower uh, it needs a bit more curving i think yeah and you can add that later you can add an extra and leaf need to do some, yeah a few petals there uh, leaves rather oh lovely. yeah Thank no you, that's darling. really nice really thank you very that. much good i'm glad so i'll say goodbye to you online and if you're doing an art stream on catch up do let me know how you get on and um, let us see what you've created um, so thank you very much everyone take care bye bye